the brown side, like he he loves the big ones. The, the more meat, the better, right? So he takes the big one. I say take the big ones. I like the thin ones too because I like I, one of the things I love to do with the fluke is uh, do like the the wrapped in crab meat, and the the thinner ones are just so much better with that. Why are you laughing? Because I know I know uh, Captain Fluke Belly has his own modified recipe. <laughs> I well, well, whatever. I mean, he just cooks it and they all eat it. It's like a, it's in the, it's just a pile in the middle. But, I feel like when you're fishing with him after you're done cleaning the fish, like you could literally probably dump his fillets out and put like pieces of an old shoe in the bag. He'll just eat it anyway. Like he, I don't think he even knows what's in the bag. Hello and welcome to episode number 41 of the NJ Multispecies Podcast. I am your host, Joe Santiago. Actually, it's a special uh, episode number 41, Frozen Edition. I am your host, Joe Santiago. Uh, This is my partner, Chris Pereira. What's going on? Uh, Chris, we had a long weekend, got out of work Friday you were already on the ice Friday after work, and then once I got there Saturday, we pretty much stayed on it until we oh, had to Thursday. go back to work. Thursday, yeah. yeah, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday after work, we hit it, and uh, we were greeted with some surprisingly sketchy ice, even more. I mean, based on the temperatures we had, you know, we were expecting some decent ice. And I look, I told Jerry to stand by, but he just came anyway. But anyway, (laughs) (laughs) anyway, (laughs) give us one minute. (laughs) Now you can't figure out how to turn it off. All right. Anyway, so uh, based on the temperatures we had, we were expecting some, you know, decent ice. Um, I remember I I basically guaranteed that I was going to be ice fishing Thursday and, uh, it was definitely the wind was a major factor. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had the temp, it's crazy. We had the temperatures, we had the low temperatures, we had the teens at night below freezing all day long for days and the wind just wouldn't let up and, uh, it screwed up everything freezing. It just, everything froze so weird. And, uh, I know I, I talked about the, the ice safety and the checking the ice, uh, last yeah, dude, time a little bit. He might be able to overlay the video of us spudding right now, like while we're talking about it. Yeah. But I thought also, uh, when we were like checking the ice, that first like top inch of the ice right below the snow, it was like not ice. It was, it was like crust. Yeah, it was, it was just like this perfect combination to screw us over, like between the wind, pushing the water around, preventing it from freezing. And then what did freeze got uh, two day, it got two separate days worth of this snow on it. And the second snow, that Friday snow, or no, I think it might have been the first, maybe, maybe both of them. It was just this like perfectly dry, airy, insulating snow. And it it made the ice underneath it just couldn't grow like we literally it this was thursday you didn't get to see this we're checking ice that forms uniformly every year and we're but we're still checking it just because you can't i mean i said i told everyone don't assume anything ever and this is why and we're checking we're spudding and we had you know we had a good three and a half four inches in the first area and usually that means the whole area there is that and when we hit 
a patch of snow, your spud bar went right through that snow. You could not walk through certain areas. Yeah. And I mean, it prevented a lot of uh, bigger places from freezing and, and there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of options and it's all, you know, it's just the perfect combination to screw us. Cause we had the temperatures and between the wind and the snow, we just, our options were severely limited. And now the up, uh, the forthcoming forecast does not look good. I mean, I, it, it looks like there might be some cold coming in February, but I, I'm just got to wait and see. I'm not going to believe anything till I see it. Um, you know, if, if you went out every day, you could, you probably got out on the smaller lakes and the stuff that freezes first. If, if you checked it, you probably got out Thursday, Friday. If you wanted to fish in the storm, I know John Dorn did. He caught a nice walleye, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And that's when we're recording it now. I know some guys are out today. Um, Mikey K and Rob and Rob Jasonic, they caught some nice bass. And then um Tuesday tomorrow, I'm assuming you'll be able to get out. And then I think that's it. We got rain coming warm. I mean, that's gonna be it for a while. Maybe it'll get cold again in February. I don't know. John Gargalgooney is probably celebrating with He refused offers. to come on the podcast again, uh grab a beer. For, uh, totally just said no way I said John will you come on for five minutes Just to say you hate ice fishing No no way So he's he thinks he's like Leonardo DiCaprio I guess I, I just don't get I've never seen someone be such a giant fan Of something and just refuse to Oh to he's a not a fan No he's a hater He's definitely not a fan You're don't. telling me he sits down with his Glass of overpriced beer every night And turns on the podcast every, Weekly just to hate not, him? Well, not every night. I think the well, podcast weekly, is once on. A night. Yeah, I think every week he has to just come on and bash the podcast, and he's going to comment again. Oh, I said you said my name wrong. And you, uh, fly fishing sucks. The same shit, and it's just a rerun again. Okay. John, you want to come on the podcast? No, never, never, no. <laughs> okay, thank you, one, John. One day. Thank you for your cooperation and participation. Uh, moving on, skillful angler update. Uh, Max Kellerman is on the board with a pickerel that he caught while he was with us. Uh, I think we somebody's got it on video. We got like too many GoPros now. On Sunday, we were all together fishing, and there was like there's a million fish on a million different cameras now. But Sunday, the fishing sucked pretty much. Saturday, it was pretty good. Uh, Chris got a skillful angler large mouth max got but that's not updated yet so chris's is an official I didn't, I didn't turn it in yet max's is official max is on the board uh yeah. joe bergen did produce a skillful angler crappy through the ice uh not confirmed yet but looks like that will be up soon too chris with yours so the ninja strikes immediately oh, what did he uh, what did he claim crappy how big he, he ain't gonna tell you nothing. He'll not. He'll not he ain't gonna give you a number. It didn't look big enough to me. Now I saw. Uh, uh, no, it's big enough. Trust me. All right, we'll see. It's big enough. Um, I saw a video online of you kicking my tip ups. I was wondering why I had a couple tip ups seem to keep misfiring. Turns out it was you kicking them because you you seem to think I bombarded your spot. Well, I mean, uh, you, you you drilled your hole 10 feet for mine, put your tip up in it, because I caught a I, fish. You just got done saying how sketchy the ice was, and there was four people. That's 16 tip-ups. I mean, how I far... checked the whole area. I told you where you could put it. You refused. It's laziness. It was a little laziness, yeah, but it it, it was all right. Whatever. All right, you well, I kicked my flags. I gave you exercise for the day. Mm. Max and Kevin both knew about it. Uh... Jen, Jen text us. Yeah, I know they did. I saw him on video, Max, doing nothing. That's why I dumped his sled in the parking lot. You can find that video, too. Max is sh shiners flopping around the Jefferson <laughs> Diner. Um, he's a disaster, by the way. I don't know what's wrong with him. Uh, he, 
he got in my truck, he already had broken poles. Like, he was loading broken rods into the sled. He's using, like, a sled that it looks like it was stolen from a child. Uh, it's a sled like a, a two-year-old toddler you'd pull on a string, like, <laughs> down, down the little I mean, in his defense, my first ice fishing sled was a sleigh ride. It was a, it was a kid's sled. I mean, I wasn't going <laughs> yeah, to buy a so jet small. sled before I even started doing it. But this one, Max's is like for an infant, though. It's not even for a child. It's an it's an infant version. Um, we saw a video of him with the pocket knife. <laughs> I thought you were going to lay off of him now. No. Oh God! Come on! All right, he chiseled the hole in some ice because he thought it would be funny. All right, <laughs> we gave him a hard time because we told him people were going to copy him and fall through the ice and die. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but the sled, the sled dumping. He was just <laughs> unloading it, and he took it out with. <clears throat> he took the sled out with one hand, and I swear it just fell over in slow motion. He did nothing. He just watched it. Jesus Christ! I'm glad I wasn't there for that. Honestly, you, you got you guys just. Oh God! You, you guys are like. Uh... I'm two, in tears. When two, when two kids have a sleepover and they try to stay up all night and they start getting ridiculous towards the end of the night. <laughs> no, and then, and then Sunday, Sunday we added Kevin to the mix. Kevin comes out. He's like MacGyver. Like there's just all kinds of like homemade innovations everywhere. Uh, he had, I think he might have more money invested in ice fishing versus the amount he actually gets to use it than anyone on the planet like if yeah, but you it's made all, it a ratio it's all made though i feel like he made it all you know like it's it's no, he, yeah but he there's money in it it's not like made the tip up the the jaw jackers are are <laughs> skimpy I, those those are cheaply made I, they, I, work, I they work yeah they're three he made those for three dollars yeah i i mean I looked for a shortcut and I ended up making mine a couple years ago out of PVC pipe and they're definitely sturdier than his, but they're a lot more bulky and they yes, take up yeah. a lot more room. His, his take up almost no room. And I mean, I thought they were going to be flopping all over the ice, falling over that. They, they really did. He packed some snow on them and they were, they did uh, work. No, yeah. they did work. They're both funny as hell. Uh, the two of them, uh, just a lot different than me and Chris. So it's all, chaotic when we all get together max especially not sure what's going on with nah, it was it was a good time and uh we've had we had some requests to do like a uh, like a, a safety ch ice checking type video i think we're gonna wait we're gonna hope that we get ice again in february we have the footage we, you know we filmed us checking the ice kind of talking about it and stuff <laughs> I think we'll we'll try to release a video of that later on if we get ice again, maybe. I mean, releasing it now just seems like a waste of time. I mean, I feel like I'm speaking at the Waker funeral of ice fishing in New Jersey. It's it's done. We don't know if it's coming back this year. <laughs> and every year yeah. we don't know if it's coming. I mean, it's it sucks. But all right, well, you could text Jerry now and tell him to come in. Uh, we're going to have Jerry ready Zagor for him? Yeah, we're going to have Jerry Zagorski come in tonight to talk about the proposed fluke regulations for this upcoming season. Uh, see what Jerry's opinion is. Chris, what's your opinion? It looks like the slot is going to be gone. Is that what uh, what it seems like? Well, uh, yeah, Jerry can confirm. I, I didn't look into the details yet cuz I don't I mean You'll have guys say that it's set and they're just going through these motions to try to make you feel like uh, they care about your opinion, which may be true. But that one inch slot was ridiculous. I don't think anyone thought that was a good idea. All right. So we got we got Jerry in here. We now. have Jerry. Here's Jerry. Hello, Jerry. 
We're just Sweet. talking about the upcoming uh, fluke regulations, Jerry, and how it seems like the slot most likely is going to be eliminated. There we go. Well, uh, you know, I don't know about all that. You know, some people, the slot helped and some it hurt. So who knows? I mean, all depends on what the state decides to submit um, and uh, and what they decide to float you know, for public opinion, but who well, knows? Wait, who, I mean, who did the one inch slot help? It just, it just stopped. I mean, in my opinion, a one inch slot is such a small slot. It's basically, I don't know, a polite way of stopping people from keeping fish. I don't know. Well, I, you know, listen, I, I, you know, for me personally, since I fished a bay some, and stay close. I think, you know, it helped us. Uh, the guys who fish the ocean uh, are dead set against it. I don't know. You know, it's a matter of opinion. I think the, you know, some of the four hires, like the party boats, um, benefit benefited from that. And, you know, some of the charter guys who fished the sticky stuff out in the ocean didn't like it at all. So, listen, you know, regardless of what happens, it's all a compromise, right? Somebody's not going to like what, you know, they decide. So what are the, yeah. do, you, do you know the options, what the options are? Well, we thought we did, and I put a post up on the site, which I thought were the options that were going to get floated, but, um, and they included some slot options. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it all depends on, you know, what the guys at the state level decide to submit uh, for approval to meet the conservation equivalency. And, um, you know, so there there's there's a lot of moving parts. Right. So, so I mean, are the options that we thought were up? Are they just out the window? Is that what you're saying? Like this? We don't know anymore. Well, you know, you don't know until we get the options back from the state, right? And so when I posted up the options on the site, those were all the options that would uh, achieve the quotas that we thought uh, that would would achieve the quotas and uh, that the state, you know, submitted or would think that would meet the conservation equivalency, which... You know, so, but, you know, it, once again, I mean, who knows, uh, you know. So it's like you said, it's, uh, you're never going to make everyone happy. I no. get that. Um, I, I guess the, the real question behind everything is, is that they, you know, people want to know that whatever the, whatever it, becomes finally whatever the regulations become for the season uh they want it to be legit they, they don't trust the people making these decisions all the time and they don't know what what's behind it like what's what's the science behind it what's the math behind it and i get and, and when they come out with a one inch slot limit it's just i don't know I, i'm actually i i agree with slots in general i i actually think i don't think it would be a bad thing if all sport fish had a slot but a one yep. inch a one inch slot is it's ridiculous well yeah but the other side of that chris is it allowed us to extend the season out further right because because okay. of that now because of that narrower slot right people were able to fish longer and I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it all depends on which side of the fence you're on. You know, the, the, the four hires want to fish as long as they can, right. right. As long as they possibly can. And, you know, if you're fishing the bay, you're for the slot. If you're not fishing the bay, you're fishing the ocean, you're not for the slot. So, you know, listen, everybody's, you know, well, that's the, def that, that's the like definition I of a compromise. Everybody's going to be disappointed. I feel like Jerry can't directly answer the question or a guy like Joe Pesci will just come up behind him and just end him. Like he, he just has to be careful because the fishing mafia is watching 
and he has to just be careful with what he says. No, uh, listen, <laughs> l- listen. At the end of the day, what basically happens is you trade uh, a narrower slot for more fishing days, or you trade a uh, a bigger fish, right, for more fishing days, or you you the the trade off is you're allowed to catch smaller fish with no slot limit with fewer fishing days, right? So, you know, listen, I mean, th- yeah. there's there's a lot of moving parts in, you know, how our um, regulations get managed. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, our local New Jersey council is powerless, right? The only decision they have to make is whether or not they want a longer fishing season, a shorter fishing season, you know, and bag limits because we're facing a 28% reduction this year. So, you know, how do you get there? And, and now you, like you, you're a boat owner uh, and I'm not, well, I'm a boat owner, but a freshwater boat. So as a saltwater boat owner, obviously your opinion is probably going to be a little different than mine, correct? Because I'll probably be like rooting for the pay for boats because that's where I'm going to be fishing most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the personal boat owners will be rooting for, I guess, personal boat owners, Chris, probably want a longer season, right? I, it depends. I mean, it depends on the person, right? If it's someone that primarily goes out fishing because they want to collect food, I mean... I'm not saying they don't enjoy the fishing, but some guys go out and their primary goal is to collect food. Some guys go out, their primary goal is to catch the biggest fish possible. They're not interested in, in killing yeah, it and eating it. That, yeah. And that's, you know, uh, that's exactly right, Chris. And, uh, you know, the four hires opinions, the parent, depending on where they are might be different from, you know, north and south, right? I mean, you know, we face that every year as well. The south wants a longer season that starts earlier. The north doesn't necessarily want a longer season. And for well, well, they want a long season, but they want it to start late. So now we have this north against south thing, you know, yeah. playing into it as well. And listen, you know, every everybody is going to have to. Well, everybody's going to be, you know probably disappointed right and with a 28 percent reduction that's staring down our face you know is it that why why is it so high well because of uh the science that goes into their recruitment numbers we didn't overfish last year you know with the slot and whatever right they spun that big prize wheel that assumes what we caught last year and that was fine but the biomass is they say, and the recruitment is down, so we're facing a reduction. So how do you get that reduction? And once again, the way that you get to the reduction is you reduce the number of days fishing, or you increase the size of the fish, or you put in a very narrow slot, right? Oh, so, God. You know, well, they're, that... They're basically used, and, and I don't... I'm, you understand this more than me. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this question, but they're basically using a mathematical equation that's, and they're plugging in a lot of estimated numbers into this Absolutely. equation. And is that based now? I know it's at least partly or supposedly based on feedback from anglers, correct? Yeah, they take, uh, they, they have uh, what's called uh, MRIP, Right, which is the marine information system program system or whatever it stands for. And they go out and survey people like you and I who come back in from a day of fishing and they don't survey anyone. So they apply a bunch of assumptions to it and they, you know, think they got, you know, figured out what the overall catch is. Right. So, yeah, I. I would, yeah. I would, I would love to see the range of error on on that. Oh, stuff. it's <laughs> listen, Jeez. self ad, self admitted, right? Uh, the federal government and all the scientists involved think 
Well, as a matter of fact, there was an article published not too long ago that they're overestimating the catches by 40%, right? Wow. So start there, right? So, so I would, I mean, you say that and I immediately jump to assume that whatever number they get, they, you know, like in any statistic, you have a range. You have a range in one direction, yeah. you have a range in the other direction. They're immediately playing it super, super safe not in you know not for us but for them and they're going all the way to the to the far end of well the worst case scenario is this so we're going to go by that yeah well uh part of that is true i mean we started out initially with a 40 percent reduction and it got got reduced to 28 partly because i think they don't believe the mrip numbers um you know partly because of the biomass and you know all those things that they do but yeah i mean so they're always going to lean on the side of conservancy it is is my opinion right especially with the recreational anglers because you know on the commercial side those guys come in they weigh their fish we know how much they caught but with the recreational side it's just like you know go ahead and spin the big prize wheel and yeah. see where it comes up right yeah i i get it and i mean it's it's tough. It's all just tough because I, I I hate like I'll I'll never freely I would never freely want to give more power to the people making the regulations because I, I just I don't trust them. And and I feel like most people most anglers feel that same way. But you do need you need regulations because there's just gonna be way too many people that would take advantage of the fishery. And uh I don't know. There there is no magical answer i guess yeah uh, well i you know i agree with you and i also uh you know want to let people uh, and your viewers know that it's not our local new jersey marine fisheries council that you know kind of like makes these decisions willy-nilly at, at the end of the day they're you know kind of powerless they get the quota right and then they have to submit options to the federal government as to what will meet that quota without exceeding it. So, you know, they're kind of powerless. The only thing that they can do is, is, um, is, uh, decide what options will be presented and then decide whether they want a longer season with, uh, with larger fish or a shorter season with shorter fish. And, you know, and sure. that's what happens. Let me ask you something. Uh, I remember being a kid, of course, uh, usually around Easter time, always going winter flounder fishing in Jersey. Yeah. Um, uh, it was like a yearly family tradition. Yeah. Everyone on board usually filled a bag with them. Yeah. Uh, that fishery is like no longer existent today. Yeah. Uh, it's been in what? Uh, it's been in this state of freeze now for maybe over ten years. How long has it been? Yeah, no, it's it's and been it, it's been that long, and they haven't been around. I mean, it hasn't returned ever. That, no, I guess only, my point that is there. There's a possibility that the fluke fishery, that same thing, could happen to the fluke fishery. Well, listen. I mean, if you think about what's been happening over the years, Joe. Uh, they i think they've mismanaged this fishery right and i think you know it's in a steady state of decline if you ask me um but you know that's but my, i just... guess my let me just ask this point before i just lose it if um we've been like you said now maybe let's just say it's been 12 years on this we've all abandoned winter flounder the fishery never came back why wouldn't it come back well, some people would argue that, you know, the waters are warming, they're, uh, uh, they're a cold water fish, and, you know, they're migrating out to deeper waters or up north, so there's a northern creep going on there. You know, you look at the, you know, the guys up in, I, you know, Montauk and, uh, and, and uh, the Nantucket Shoals, they're catching some huge, huge fluke, and, you know, we, we, we don't have that fishery. So could that be some of it? I think so. And, you know, the other thing is we got so many stripers and 
so many other fish that we're protecting, like the dogfish that eat oh, those. God. The fish. stripers are eating. I, I, the stripers must be feasting on fluke, man. They must be just uh, massacring uh, them. Uh, I, I, I think there's something to that, Joe. And um, the reason that I say that is the great striper fishery that we have right now um, coincides with a decline in uh, in in the winter flounder fishery that we have. It used to be, you know, you could winter flounder fish, and once the bluefish showed up, and then the stripers, the winter flounder were gone. And um, that's not the case anymore. They they just don't come around anymore because we've got stripers in our waters year round. That's you know, listen, this isn't based on on any kind of science or anything. It's just my observation, you know. So we're we fishing. should start we should start jigging like eleven inch rubber fluke when we're striper fishing. Yeah. Well, and and listen, the the, the guys who are fishing out deep like you know, 120 feet or so for cod in the spring and the fall, they're, they're catching the flounder, right? So the flounder, the winter flounder are there, but they're just not coming in anymore. Why might that be? I don't know. I mean, look, I, I don't think, uh, I, I think the, you're saying it's, you know, just your opinion, which, yeah, we get that. Everyone has an opinion. But I think the opinions of anglers, guys that are out there constantly and talking to other anglers that are out there constantly, I'm not saying anything's fact or not, but, I mean, I think it's. I think the anglers that are out there, their opinions are important. I mean. I, well, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, it, it's better than the science, the so-called science that we have now where – you know, they interview a couple people at the dock and they multiply that by how right. many days and whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, the, yeah, this isn't, this isn't, what people have to understand is, you know, they always like to say, well, oh, well, if the science says this, then that, this is not a laboratory in a controlled environment. This is nature. Yeah. This is, you know, the well, currents listen, change, the weather this, change, everything changes. There's there's too many variables. Absolutely. And when, when it comes to this uh, MRIP, which is the system that kind of uh, tries to quantify what we caught last year. It's just like, it's all over the place. It's like, it, it's full of assumptions, right? They take a small sampling of data and they multiply at times what they think the effort is. And it, you know, it doesn't take a lot of common sense things um, into account, including what fishermen tell them, right? So, all right. That's, you know, it's kind of where we're at. I mean, any, any, any science based on uh, the assumption that a fisherman is telling you the truth is <laughs> it's, it's already severely flawed. Yeah. Why, can't well, listen. They, why can't they use the same formula that they use to make the striper fishery so unbelievable now? Uh, just use the same formula for every fish. Well, um, I think the answer to that is a, a lot of this, you know, used to be based on um, used to be based on the quota that you had last year and what they assumed you caught. And now they're starting to introduce wisely, you know, stock assessments and things like recruitment and things of that sort. And the reason that, um, you know, stripers are great right now, but the recruitment you know, went off the deep end, you know, the, in the Hudson, in the uh, Chesapeake where all those stripers are bred and they're, they're, you know, concerned about that. Right. It's, you know, so it's, it's not only how many fish are going out because we caught them, but it's how many fish are coming in. So, you know, listen, it's very complex and it's alphabet soup and, you know, things of that nature. But, uh, you know, I, I think we can make a lot of improvements and apply, you know, some common sense rules. What is elephant soup? I'm going to steal that. What, what alphabet soup. Elephant soup. Alpha, soup. I, alpha like alphabet the soup. AFMSC. Do you what, know what, what that is? is? Or the NJMFC. The cream puff forecast, he said. Right. 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 That's a little different. All right. We got to yeah, let so, it go. But, because but, he's got, you're going black fishing in the morning, aren't you, Jerry? Yes, I am. On what boat? 
uh, we're going out on the Ocean Explorer, and I saw today um, there was a 14 and a half pounder caught on, I believe it was the Sea Owl. I saw that I picture. See that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. it, it, the fish looks like it's an alien. Right. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, so Jerry has to go to bed because he probably has to be up early. Mm-hmm. You're going to go to bed or you're going to stay up all night? His robe. Yeah, I'm, going, on, I'm right? going to bed. He's got to get his robe. <laughs> oh, Jerry, if you came on the podcast already in the robe, I, that would have been it for me. I'm just dressed from the waist up, so. <laughs> Don't stand up. <laughs> Jerry, Don't thank you so your much for coming off. on. I Hi, guys. Get, Peace. I, I hope you get a double digit tomorrow. I hope so, too, guys. Take care. Yeah, Jerry, let, let us know. know. I'll see you. Take care. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, uh, it's tough, man. I don't even keep fish half the time, so I'm always for the much tighter side, but I feel like, Fluke, if there was well, one fish on planet Earth like you were going to go fish for just for to keep the fish, it's Fluke. Like, What about sea bass? Uh, oh, sea bass too, yeah, but uh, there's really no... The sea bass fishery is another one that's overlooked uh, with the stripers. Scott Howard like hates them like the devil, but... The sea bass fishery in New Jersey is phenomenal now. It is this year was one of the best years I've ever seen. It's it's always been good. I don't, I don't remember any. Uh... It's it's real good now though. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. Like most things are on the decline. Like the stripers and the sea bass are. I feel are no one mentions the sea bass. No one talks about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, and look to me. I know you said you 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 know you. You're, you throw back most of your fish. You don't like to eat a lot of fish anyway or whatever. Uh, and that's fine. Like, I mean, I, I'm kind of like killing them. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of the same way. I, I don't keep any big fish except like a tuna or something. Like yeah. I don't, I got no problem throwing. If I'm fishing for fluke and I'm out there, you know, you're spending extra money when you're saltwater fishing. It's more expensive than freshwater fishing. You know, people want to keep their fish and a lot, you know. Why do you hate that one inch slot so much though? Because that seems to be like where that number is in Jersey because it the fish is always somewhere in the seventeen and a quarter, seventeen and three quarters. That's what I told myself at the beginning because that it was true at one point. And I mean I guess it still is, maybe in the like in the very back bay areas and stuff. But like what Jerry mentioned, if you're out there so what when I go fluke fishing, and I think a lot of guys are in the same category. I'm out there. I want to catch a big one just Dormat. because I'm, I'm, I want to catch a big fish. I want, yeah, you know. for Same way. Doormat. Same. But, but I also want to take a couple of smaller ones home to eat. You know, what's funny. So, I got to tell you this. I've been on party boats where I've traded fluke with other people. Um, for what? Because of the so- I like my fillets like paper thin. Like, so oh, I'm looking, no, I'm with you. But I've taken, like, I've been on a party boat with an eight, like a 22 inch fluke, and, an, you know, some other guy's got a, a, a 18 inch fluke. I'll trade him. He's like, here you go, uh, trade with me. Well, you can't do with the new rules. You can't do that. You can't do that anymore. But, but I used to do it. I'll always trade the bigger fish for the smaller, fr- smaller it's, fish. It's funny you say that. You thought I was going to think you were weird when, you know, when I go out fishing, like if I go out fishing with John or whatever, and, you know, Catcher, I catch John? John this guy, uh, Captain Fluke Belly. Um, you know, let's say I catch two big ones and two small ones, or well, what I guess with the new rules, well, one each and whatever. Anyway, we got all the fish there. The thicker fillets that come off of the the top side, the brown side, like he. He loves the big one. The, the more meat, the better, right? So he takes the big one. I say take the big ones. I like the thin ones too because I like I, one of the things I love to do with the fluke is uh, do like the the wrapped in crab meat, and the the thinner ones are just so much better with that. Why are you laughing? Because I know I know uh, Captain Fluke Belly has his own modified recipe. <laughs> 
I well, well whatever. I mean, he just cooks it and they all eat it. It's like a it's in the, it's just a pile in the middle. But, I feel like when you're fishing with him after you're done cleaning the fish, like you could literally probably dump his fillets out and put like pieces of an old shoe in the bag. He'll just eat it anyway. Like he, I don't think he even knows what's in the bag. I well, whatever. And <laughs> I mean, you might be right, but I've anyway. seen him eat shit that I don't know how a normal human can chew it. He eats it. Oh, this is great. Wow. Well, we could turn that into a whole episode, too. <laughs> if you can get him on the show, we'll we'll do a whole episode on it. Oh, God. Okay. Um, I can't keep it together uh, this episode. I'm crying. There's just too many characters here. Yeah. I, look, in case anyone <laughs> was wondering... Uh, we were supposed to have Eddie from Toggy Time Jigs on today. He he wasn't able to make it. We have to reschedule him. We're you want to explain the voicemail? Well, hold on. So we're going to have Eddie from Toggy Time Jigs on uh, in April sometime, closer to like when black fishing picks up again, because kind of tailing off now, and he had some some work, uh, some work conflicts, and and we just had to reschedule him. So we we kind of had to throw this episode together. Jerry was nice enough. Nice enough to come on before his bedtime, uh, and we did an episode that we were going to do later on in the season, and we did it now. So we want to talk about the fluke regulations. Uh, once they become finalized, we'll talk about it again. But basically, just to close all that out, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I, there probably isn't an answer. You're never going to make everyone happy. Like we've already said, um, you know, there's always going to be guys that are going to say, ah, screw it. I'm going to do what I want anyway. I mean, it's kind of just a, it's a free for all. I, I don't know. I always lean towards the stricter rules. Yeah, but I, I, I'm like, I told you, I wanted fish to be checked in like deer. I wanted you to have to call a hotline. I don't, and... I don't want to hand power over to these entities. I, I just don't want, I'll never relinquish it. it. It's, it's not something that I'll ever agree with. Well, like I, he was just talking about how they're spinning like a mag magic wheel and taking a guess. I mean, at the end of the day of fishing, if just like hunting, you had to call a hotline and automated put you know give your cid number and say exactly what you caught that day it would bring that number more to an accuracy than a I, just I a mean, guess it'd be a pain in the ass but uh it's better than guessing no i don't know if it's yeah it'd be better but i don't it's not it's not as feasible it's not as easily done as with deer right i mean most most, what do you think is the amount of guys that bring their deer to a butcher where you have to have that paperwork, the number? That I'd have no idea. I would um, assume it's pretty high. I don't think, I think a small percentage of guys are butchering I would say their own 80%. Deer. I would say 80% bring it in and 20% do it, maybe 25%. That number, you may be able to look up that number. I'm not going to do it right now, but I bet you that number might be somewhere. Someone might have done that research. But okay. I would I would bet that the number of people that bring their deer to a butcher is high. The number of people that butcher the deer themselves is pretty low. So now you're talking about uh, checking in the deer. That information is going to be fairly accurate because out of the small amount of people that are butchering their own deer, how many of those people are lying when they check in their deer over the phone. Yeah, but see, you're you're all like your way of thinking is always very cynical because you always think like everyone is, you know, from the bad perspective. But I think there's a larger number of I just literally said the do. opposite. I said I don't think I don't think a lot of people are lying about their deer and then butchering it themselves in secret. I don't oh, yeah, think that's I, I happening. Think no, they are that much. Yeah. I know they are, but I if don't. If they're think butchering that it themselves, much. most of them aren't checking them in. <laughs> All right. Well, either way, I think the number of people that it would be. Much, let's put it this way: it would be. Leave much us a voicemail easier. if you if you butcher your own deer and actually check bucks in. Leave us a voicemail. <laughs> um. 
Well, what I'm saying is it would be much easier to not check your fish in because yeah it would yeah nobody you know you don't bring your fish to a guy to fillet it unless you're on a party boat or a charter boat and they're doing it as part of the the fair well the way that the deer thing works is once you check the deer in you get the confirmation number now you're able to transport the deer so if you're pulled over and you don't have the confirmation number you're in trouble so Right, but um, that's what I'm if saying. If I call my striper in and, you know, I get pulled over on the highway or something. I, yeah, I guess you're right. It won't you're gonna, work. It's much easier to hide a fish. It's much easier to fillet a fish and eat. It's just, I, I know, but why can't you just call, you know, you're done I'm fishing. Sh- you call the number. It hel- it's going to help the future of the, of the uh, fishery. What? What's the issue? You, you can't I'm use not, the phone? I'm not necessarily arguing against it i'm just i'm arguing generally speaking because you're giving them more power right and i don't trust them with that power just generally Uh, speaking that's understandable i I, I have no argument against that i mean i don't know i i think the answer this thing with jerry saying that they have to we overfished by 28 percent, and that's just based on someone guessing that's the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard I mean, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's I get once again, it's fine with me because that means they're going to tighten the regulations even more, which is always good from my point of view. But uh, I, I it think, sounds ridiculous. I think there's a better way to do it. Um, you know, I think that you can let people keep a certain range of fish bigger than a slot of only one inch. Um, and protect, I I think the most important things, and I think most, most, you know, marine biologists would agree with this. I I know, I know Justin Lerner does and is the most important thing to protect it is the, the bigger fish, the breeding fish, the, the fish that are going to, you know, lay more eggs, pass better genes on, um, well, that's one of the reasons behind the striper explosion now is that you could only keep that small slot fish. The right. cows are all getting thrown back. And I think I think that something like that is is great. I, even with fluke, I think a a little bit bigger of a slot, generally speaking, and you know, let's say three fish per person or at least, you know, I I'd say, I'd say something around three fish per person in a slot around that smaller size, but a wider slot that gives people, you know, a, a range to keep fish in. Well, then, my other thing is when I, when I imply my socialistic new phone system, that's taking over saltwater, uh, the bag limits have to, the daily bag limits, ridiculous. Hunting is like one buck, you know, I get one antler deer per season. Like, what is this, like, six trout per day? Uh, Guys have to, like, there's people out fishing that they have to keep, they can't take a picture until they got the little string with all all the trout there. Like, they can't, if there's only five on the stringer, they can't, they need the six one in the string, right? Like they always got to have the little string picture with the six trout. Yeah, but, but Joe, those people, those people are fishing two or three times a season. See, I think they're going every day. Those people like you d- for like Once the first you, three days of opening day trout stocking season, you get no. six trout per week. You call in once you get your six, you're done. That's it for the week. Take it off. I'm not disagreeing with that. Again, I just, I don't, I, I'm sure that this something along the lines of what you're talking about, I'm sure has crossed their mind. You don't need fluke. You don't need three fluke a day. Six fluke per week is okay per person. Yeah, but if if you're out there that much, you're pumping that much money into the the uh, economy and of the fishery. I mean, there's nothing I, wrong with catch argue. and release. I get it, but if if if, if you, you shouldn't be eating too much of this shit anyway. You shouldn't be. It tells you in the book how often each person should be eating it. You shouldn't even be eating it, it that much. I mean, it, you're right, but 
Someone... What do you mean I'm right? You keep it... saying I'm right. You've been fighting me for a half hour. No, I'm not fighting you. The, Joe, it's a, this is America. Like, if someone wants to keep fish within the regulations and eat it every fucking day, then they can. I'm challenging the regulations. They're ridiculous. Every day? No. Who's going out every day? And if they are, no. they're pumping so much money into the account. I'm talking about saltwater fishing. I'm talking all fishing. Well, what's the difference? If 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 the river gnome is eating crappies out of those places every day, he's a superhero. Or he's gonna be dead. He's gonna be glowing fucking orange. Listen, like, what about Henro? Henro eats the fish before they're in the net. He swallows them. I I have seen him take a bite out of a live walleye just in the net. What's the problem? So he, he's living off fish. And that's his right. I, I don't I don't think, you know, when he gets to fish, he wants to, when he gets to hunt, he's hunting deer, he's got a freezer full of deer. I mean, how do you argue with that? How do you how do you try to stop him from doing that? I don't want to. I don't want to stop him from doing it, but I want to limit his his See, we're conservationists. These guys are their eradicators. I don't I wouldn't say that. Really? No, I, look, <laughs> not specifically those two characters, but listen, there's people out there that are, they're ridiculous, dude. Bad. I don't think there's a lot of guys that are great anglers and also just eat everything in sight every time they go. <laughs> Have you ever seen an angler that under fishing pictures, instead of writing nice fish or that's a good one, he just writes delicious. That's his comment. <laughs> Every pick delicious. I mean, that's 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 his uh, that's his gimmick. I mean, look, when he when he won the Chuck Manny striper trip, he was joking that he, he was going to eat all the stripers. He, uh, he is going to. He will. Not. Oh, he will. Oh well, as soon as now Chuck now we're on the podcast accusing people of uh, breaking regulations. I've seen, I've seen him swallow stripers that big. All right, do you want to do this phone number so I can go to sleep, please? Do you do you have it? Get it. You talk about something. All right. So, uh, we we got ourselves a phone number, right? It's it's a unique phone number just for the podcast. It goes straight to an answering machine, and the, or voicemail. Sorry, I'm old as hell. It goes straight to a voicemail, and you can leave a message there. Now, we, we got this because we wanted to, uh, some you know, people who've been listening to the podcast from the beginning, you know this already, we wanted the podcast to be like an open forum in, in that Anyone listening, any anglers in the tri-state area listening that, and they want to, they hear us talking about something, they want to add something to some, to something we talked about, uh, instead of your only option being to l drop a comment somewhere that may get lost, even though we try to reply to everything and, and keep any conversation going, that's worth keeping going. Now there's a number that you can call and you can leave any kind of message you want. Now, especially, especially the clubs too, because we do, uh, especially knee deep club. I miss a lot of knee deep stuff. Knee deep, uh, Kevin Glenn, Eddie Mackin, just leave a voicemail. I'll see the voicemail. Uh, Ra uh RVTA, Mikey K, Matt Yanetta, the other, t any fishing tournament, Kevin Glenn. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys in mayhem that throw different tournaments. You're throwing a tournament, throw it on the voicemail. Yeah. Um, uh, and you could. You yeah, could you, you could talk to the voicemail like it's going to be played on the on the podcast because it might be played, right? Right. If it's if it's something uh, important and we're and that's worth talking about, we may play it. You can it can be anonymous. You can say who you are. We don't really give a crap. Um, if you want to add something to something we already talked about, we can double back to it and discuss it. And this is also again. If you want to be on the podcast to talk about something, contact us. That's a whole different thing. That's open as well. But some a lot of people don't want to do that or they're shy or they don't have the time or whatever. Leave the message. It's gonna it's basically doing the same thing. It's just giving you another avenue to be part of this, uh, to give your opinion. 
and and whatnot. Except uh, if you're if you're trying to promote a product, and and we haven't used it, we won't promote it. So. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we made that rule from the beginning. A um, couple, a uh, couple businesses can't. I mean, look, if we if we know you or if we know someone that can that we trust that can back up whatever you're selling, uh, we usually let that go. Like that's totally cool with us, as long as we can, you know, basically as long as we can confirm it's a quality product or service. We're totally cool with that. That's why you see any anything you see pop up on our stuff, unless for the couple of occasions where something slips through that we didn't notice. Anything else is basically we stand behind it either through and, ourselves personally or through someone that we trust. Except Mahara stuff, we don't. But we don't stand behind anything. I thought you did stand behind that. I used to. I train. I I flipped. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, so now what? Because I never stood behind him. Yeah, we're we're not behind him at all. Zero. Oh, all right. The number is five five one three six one zero six six seven. And uh, just to add, obviously, uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously. If you want to go on there and just uh, make fun of us for ten minutes because it make you feel better about your day, we do well, have two phone calls from Filthy Frank. Um, Deuce we, has those. Do we know who this is or no? We have no idea who Filthy Frank is. There's another one from some other person. We don't know who he is either. Did we, uh, so we've only gotten prank phone calls so far. Did I, don't we, think I was going to say, realize. did we get any serious phone calls yet? No. Not nothing. a single one. Not at all? Nothing. No, I, I love it. No. I bet I'm hoping you, to get nothing serious. Well, I bet you 10 bucks. Luke leaves a serious message on there within a week or two. Well, I'm hoping it works. Uh, listen, I don't usually. I like fishing knee deeps tournaments, and I don't usually like know about them till I see the results posted. So uh, this would really be great if the club guys would call stuff in. Uh, at least me and you would know about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, stuff seems to get buried on the internet these days, especially. Uh, oh, it does. It gets buried fast. And and like on a. On a, in like a five or six day period like we just are having now where where there's ice all of a sudden uh there's so much stuff getting posted at the same time from all different people that uh, uh shit just gets buried bad and uh no i don't know i thought it was a cool idea it, it you know doesn't really doesn't really cost us anything and if someone wants to call I, dude if you're if someone if you're out fishing it and, does take up memory on our Google Drive. Oh, does it? Do I have yeah. to pay for that? Um, well, it won't be for not. It, if this not, starts costing me money, it, uh, that's done. That's it. Well, the Google Drive eventually will be full. We can't erase the messages. Like, how long are we going to save the message from filthy well, Frank? Still, I, there's podcast episodes filling it up. I'm getting off. I don't want to even. Are we that. able to play one of those messages now, or no? We have to wait. Can we put one on right now? All right, this guy's not even here. Deuce is gone. <laughs> Deuce is gone. Who's the guest next week? Who's All the right. guest? He next called week? us idiots. He said, "No, we can't do that." He um, said he can't just play it right now, but it might play when you're watching this. Maybe it'll just play, like right now. It Who's worked? the guest next week, Chris? Did it work? Well, he could put it in there, right where I just did. All right. Where, who's the guest next week? Uh, we got your buddy uh, Dave Dave Katowski. Did I say that right? Dave Katowski, downstate Homer? Dave, the man from uh, the famous steelhead fisherman from the New York tributaries. What's his nickname, Cromer? Or is that He's just got a you? million nicknames? Depends what part of the some pieces of the state call him Cromer, other ones call him downstate Dave, and then there's another piece in New York calls him Rave. Is uh, is he is he's like he's like legendary status like what, legendary. i'm not a huge steelhead like angler i've done Le a legendary yeah legendary. yeah when it comes to those fish yeah i'm especially to, if you're talking back like 80s 90s to i mean this dude's got photo albums that are just unbelievable he's the one that told us the internet ruined fishing no i remember that yeah <laughs> but i feel like i kind of talked him down off that a little bit I don't know. He's probably going to tell us the internet destroyed steelhead fishing for sure. I think he actually probably stopped steelhead fishing because of the internet, but huh. um, 
I know what he does now, but I'm not even going to say what he does because it's just so secretive. I don't even. I'll just let him talk. So but yeah, is Dave Kotowski. Come on and share nothing. Probably yeah. Well, he'll just no. Nah, he'll he's very informative. Has a long history. Has a photo album like I've never seen before. So I, I'm I'm uh, I'm kind I'm excited. I I don't uh, I don't I haven't I haven't steelhead fished that much. I've gone up couple of times over the last couple of years i i kind of always just tag along with a group or with someone and i kind of just have been absorbing information i haven't really experienced enough to to call myself an experienced steelhead guy like so i am i am uh intrigued to see what he has to say i was intri- i was introduced to him years ago on a construction site like maybe 15 years ago i was like just started out going up to salmon river somebody on the job site said something like oh that kid's going to Salmon river and this guy heard it he looks like patrick swayze it's funny as hell um <laughs> But he came over, I started talking to him, and he just, the, the stuff that he knew, he, eventually he ended up inviting me fishing, he lives like maybe an hour from my house, he said, you want to go trout fishing with me in New York? I said, okay. Uh, I had never even really been trout fishing in New York, I only knew New Jersey, I said, yeah, I'll go. So, well, you know, this was I'm your not- introduction to steelhead? No, this wasn't even steelhead, this was just trout. Oh first time fishing with this guy so i go up there to his house i meet him i get in his car and uh he all of a sudden pulls out like it's like one of those old maps with the spiral bindings but it's got like duct tape holding it together it's like disintegrated and inside's all highlighter marks and shit and I'm like, where are we going? He's like, oh, we're going to the to the Adirondack. I'm not going to name the river. We're Adirondack. I'm how far is the ride? He's like, it's four hours from here. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, we're going four hours right now? He's like, yeah, we're going to the Adirondacks. I I like I couldn't believe it. I said, this guy's now, out of his mind. Now, if you were anything, then how how long ago was this? It's it's got to be probably at least eleven years ago. So now, if if you were anything back then, like you are now, at that point, when you find out how far you're going and you're in someone else's car and you don't have any control over the situation, you're having a fucking panic attack. Yeah, but like I didn't have basically being kidnapped right now, and you're freaking out. At the time, I did not have kids or a house, so I could kind of just be like, "Oh yeah, all right, whatever." So well, it wasn't I, as bad as if that if that happened now, you I'd roll out of the car onto the throughway. Yeah, you I would, would just back. tuck and roll, get the hell out, would, and start running through the woods, make up any excuse possible. Yeah, I gotta go Shit home. Your yeah. pants and just like, but yeah, oh, this God. guy, this guy will literally he'll drive five hours, go trout fishing like we do, like you know, normal trout fishing for 45 minutes and then just drive five hours home. He's mentally insane. Well, I, I, I we all are a little bit in our own all way. Right, I'm, I'm going to bed. We'll talk to him next week. Hey, you just, you took care of the intro already. Yeah. No intro for, for him. No intro. <laughs> if you didn't watch this episode, you're screwed. You're getting if thrown you didn't right watch in. This episode, you're very lucky. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya.